every year, more than two million of us get a visit from a district nurse. We keep a lot of people safe and in their own homes. Hello. We become really close to our patients. We're in their lives for years. 10,000 of them travel all over the country to wherever they are needed. You really never know what you're going into. It can be life and death for some people. From our birth. Hello. To old age. Happy birthday. They work day. Just pop the lights on. And night. Oh, she's looking gorgeous, isn't she? To help us through the toughest times. Oh, don't cry. Oh, my goodness. You've yeah. done absolutely amazing. I can't believe I'm home. I'm lucky. I am so, so lucky. In the Georgian spa town of Bath, so, are you alright with what you've got? Because you seem like you've got an awful lot of visits. Shona is the sister in charge of a dozen district nurses. We're just getting all our patients allocated and make sure everybody's going to be seen today. So, um, it's organised chaos. <laughs> Her team look after 250 patients in the city and surrounding countryside. We all know what we're doing, it's just getting everything together because we haven't got the luxury of then um, going to a cupboard and getting stocks or things like that. So, we've got to make sure we've got everything with us. Bye, Shona. Bye. 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 Shona makes up to 10 house calls a day. We're going to see a patient, Mr. Com, who's a 93-year-old gentleman. He's um, registered blind. He's also deaf. Um, he's had a stroke in the past, so his speech can be a little bit slurred. Shona has been visiting Mr. Com for eight years. When we used to visit Mr. Com, um, he'd always get um, give us a bunch of flowers. We wrangled for a couple of weeks saying he doesn't have to buy us anything. At the moment, what we've got it down to is a box of chocolates every visit. Hello, Mr. Com. Hello, Madam Shona. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I've got one foot in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to see you here. Oh. It makes my day because it's somebody to talk to. Pleased to be here. I'm going to do your leg dressings and we'll get this one all nice and clean. Mr. Com has fragile skin. Let's just pop that one in first, Mr. Com. That's it. If you bend. If his legs aren't regularly washed and freshly dressed, he risks getting serious infection. They're so cheerful. And they do a damn good job. You're always having a bit of a joke with us. I don't grumble. They may amputate my leg last <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Mr. Com lives alone, and nurses visit him twice a week. They've become friends now. They're real friends. Well, I've known you for a long time now. You know we like coming here to see you, don't you? I feel quite honoured in looking after him. He fought in wars for our country so I could live the life that I lead now. Here's his medal here, which is pretty amazing. That's a, is the Burma Star there. That's a medal from Dunkirk. They're absolutely amazing, those medals. I think you're wonderful. Have you got everything you need? No. What? Money. <laughs> I haven't got any of that. <laughs> That's very naughty. No, it's you, not. You know I shouldn't really take them. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, but you know we come here. It's part of our job to come here and see to you. Take care. Bye. Bye. They're very nice. And I really do look forward to them coming. Good morning, Community Neuro and Stroke Service. How may I help you? Karen works on the other side of Bath. She's been nursing for over 30 years. Ever since I can remember, I wanted to be a nurse, and I can even remember telling my first primary school teacher when I first started school at four that I was going to be a nurse. And I can remember dressing up 
with my little play set as a nurse with a little cape and the apron with a little cross on and a little hat. And I'd bandage my dolls and I'd give them pretend medicine. Karen treats patients recovering from strokes. You just never know what's around the corner, really. I see lives completely shattered. One day people are living the high life, the next day they literally can't move. She's visiting Audrey, an 82-year-old great-grandmother who had a stroke several weeks ago. Hello, Audrey! The weeks immediately following a stroke are critical to recovery. Good morning! Karen comes twice a week to see Audrey. What's all this I've been hearing about you? Oh, we've been spreading gossip. I've had a phone call this morning. What's Did been, you? Yeah, what's been going on? Oh, I just had a little fall. No. Nothing to worry about. And the paramedics came out, checked you all over? Yeah, yeah. But oh, sweetie, I, I can't know. leave you for a minute, can I? <laughs> what are we going to do with well, you? Well, I don't know. Put me in a dustbin? Oh, can't do that. <laughs> i got to put you through your paces today with your exercises, so oh, we can't yeah. be doing that. It's a horrible feeling when you realise that you've had a stroke. You can't get up the stairs and you can't get in your own bed. Before I had this stroke, I was very active, cut my grass, went to Skittles and done everything myself, really. Do you want to just show me if you can get your legs up on the bed? Over. Good. Right. Over. Good night. Good night. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to work you hard today. Right. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, ready. Raring to go. Audrey's stroke has left her partially paralysed on her left side. So I'm going to just support your ankle, and I want you to do all the hard work. To repair her damaged muscles and help her get back on her feet, Audrey needs to follow a daily exercise programme. Really push that muscle out there. I know it's hard. We do need to get these muscles working. I'm just going to just gently help you to straighten this arm because it is really obviously not as strong as the other arm. No, no, not by any means. Very hard, this yeah. way. Yeah. Dealing with a stroke isn't just physically challenging. It's really important we truly know how you're feeling because I know you, you put on a bit of a brave face. Well, maybe... How do you know that? Ah, see, I do know these things. I don't do nothing all day, do I? Sat in that wheelchair. I know. So I've been one for getting around and going to going out and doing, you know, different things, and now, sat in there, it's a bit awkward. Audrey has lived alone, independently, since her husband died 20 years ago. But since her stroke, she's been forced to rely on visits from nurses and a team of carers, who wash, dress, and feed her. Well, I know I'm 82, but I think I'm not old enough to go in a home. That's the truth, and that about it, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I hope I get back upon my feet and get going, yeah. Coming to work every day that just makes you think so differently about your own life. The little problems that I have in my life compared to some of the patients that I work with is so insignificant and it really does make you think, just enjoy every day and not moan because invariably we've got nothing to moan about. With a large number of patients to treat, Hello. Shona and her team have to get through their appointments as fast as possible. I would love to give my patients all day so I can sit and chat with them, but it's just not possible. You are thinking about the next person you've got to go to because there are lots of unwell people that you've got to look after. And throughout the day, there are more patients ringing in. Shona's on her way to see 83-year-old Peggy. She's lovely. She's, um, normally she's doing her baking when we go in, so it always makes us very hungry. Something smells nice, Peggy. What are you baking this morning? Um, I'm going to do mincemeat, and then when it's cooked, I shall make shepherd's pie. Oh, very nice. And if I rub the pastry up, then I shall put it into a pie, ordinary pie. Oh, lovely. So, should we have a look at this leg then? Yes. Nothing's broken at all. Peggy has a recurring leg infection which needs regular dressing to keep her out of hospital. It's probably still healing a little bit inside because we've only just got it healed. Although she is often in pain, she's reluctant to call Shona. 
I just assume that there's such a lot of people that need help that are far more ill than myself. But if there's any change at all, you need to phone us. But um, you know, I'm reluctant to do that. I know, sure. but you must because if you don't, then yes. it will turn nasty very quickly Absolutely. if it gets infected. And then if you've got any more problems, just give us a ring. You know I won't ring you unless it's necessary. No, but you must, because if it gets to the stage it did last time when it got all infected, it's better that we catch it early. Yes. All right, then. Thank you for those um, chocolates, but you shouldn't have really got them, but thank you for I, sending them. I just didn't know how to say thank you to you. Say thank you is absolutely plenty. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll see you soon. Yes, thank you okay. so much. Bye. Yeah, hold well on. Sarah's for you. Jammy Dodgers. Shona's office is filled with presents from grateful patients. It makes you feel nice that you've helped somebody and, you know, you do make a difference because you don't always get thanked because that's not why you do the job. All these uh, cards and letters that we've received from patients. This one was from one of our patients. He, he coloured this in for us. We shall keep it forever and ever. You know, if you're nursing somebody for years and years, we do get to be a big part of their lives. So, you know, you go through their lives where they have grandchildren come through, and it, it is quite nice to be privileged to be part of that. That's a breakfast. In Bath, district nurse Shona gets her children ready before she leaves for work. These are my children. This is Lucy and she's three, and this is Joseph, who we call Jojo, and he's one. Lucy's pretty much like me. She's a little bit bossy. Mummy, get bossy. <gasps> Lucy's breathless. <laughs> I'm quite bossy. <laughs> Fits quite well as being in charge of the team. Hiya. Hi, Shona. Hi, you all right? right? Shona's husband works, and her parents help with childcare. She can be a very bossy little madam. She always, she always has been, even since she was about that high, you know. Tells us what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing if we're a bit under the weather, you know. You don't always believe me when I tell you there's something wrong. No, I usually check online as well. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. And you. Yeah. Okay. See you later. See you later. She works very hard at the, at the, at the job, you know. She don't mind helping out with the kids and looking after them. Only for short spells, then. We can always give them back. I don't mind saying goodbye to my children in the mornings because I know that they're safe. As soon as I step out the front door and get in the car, then uh, my brain switches to being a nurse then. Um, I switch off from being a mum and switch on to being a nurse. Specialist nurse Karen is on her way to see Audrey. Oh, that's lovely. She's recovering from a stroke and her family are visiting. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and I lucky. Look at that. Today, Karen will continue the process of helping Audrey to walk again. Oh, hi there. Hello. You must be Emily. Yeah. Is that right? I'm Karen, the nurse. Come to see your late grandma. So what we'll do, we'll just get you to stand. That's right. Think of this weak hand. Make sure it's where it needs to be. Lovely. OK, nice and tall. Bottom in, boobs out, OK? The stroke left Audrey partially paralysed on her left side. She has to relearn simple movements. So we're just going to go to the fridge, Audrey. Oh, that's the nurse, right? So just show me how, which way you're going to turn if you were going that getting way. milk out the fridge. You're oh, go that way. Yeah, just think about your turning. Just a few little steps. <gasps> Whoa, no, hang on. Let me stop you a minute. Why? Just stick your bottom in because you're leaning back. That's it. And I don't want to catch you today, all right? <laughs> OK. To become independent again, she will need to do this on her own. So if we just turn so you're facing the fridge, literally, frame in front, go, yep. Yeah. And then turn into the fridge, Audrey, like we were just now, and then we'll go, go from there. Lovely. It's fantastic, really. It feels great to get up out of the chair after being sat in there. Just a couple of weeks ago, we weren't able to do this. I weren't able to stand, really. 
Right, what do you think? Then? Okay, very good, man. Very good? Yeah, very impressive. Mm, better than when you uh, saw me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, much is, better than well, to actually see you part. moving and walking yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Well done. I felt that that went really well today. I'm really pleased with Audrey. Whatever she's faced with, she just deals with it and, and moves on in a positive way. And I think that's incredible. Barb, you want any biscuits? No, thank you, no. Barbara and Bob have been married for over 60 years. I'm nearly 83, and Bob, and he'll be 86. <laughs> we can still fight. <laughs> <laughs> They've lived in Bath all their lives. We don't know the years go by. <laughs> well, it have gone by quick. Yeah, it have gone by. Haven't? Gone by too yeah. quick, really. Yeah. Shona's on her way to visit them. Barbara and Barbara are a really nice couple. They're also happy and they help one another. They look after one another, which is really nice. Barbara is a diabetic who needs regular checkups from the nurses. Morning. <laughs> you all right, Bob? Yeah, all right, Jenna. Good. Yeah. Just going to do your dressings today. Has it been bothering you much? Just get a sharp pain now and again. Is that on your toes again? Yes. Barbara's diabetes is damaging the circulation in her legs. They're still swollen. A little bit, yeah. Mm. It looks quite painful at times. And Barbara has seen firsthand how serious her condition can be. My sister had diabetes and she had her leg amputated. Her sister died a few months ago. She just gave up. But I don't want to end up having my leg off and ending up like my sister. Now, when was the last time you took your painkillers? Don't take painkillers. You haven't taken any. Can you? Will you take some for me right. after this? I was a tea lady, and I was working till I was 80, and I was going up and down 100 stairs a day. <laughs> this is a shock to me, to be like this. Can you move your toes? Yes, dear. You wiggle them? Yes. Yeah, and you're comfortable? Yes, I am. Good. I'll see you on Monday, Barbara, OK? Yes, thank you very much. Always amazes me how strong people can be, particularly elderly patients. They've seen and done and lived so much in their life. I hope I'm like that when I'm older. So it, it always amazes me how resilient they can be to things. I'm quite determined. I try and everything I can to walk again and I'm gradually getting there gradually after two months helping Audrey recover from her stroke today could be specialist nurse Karen's last visit I'm hoping to discharge Audrey today but it will depends on how she is with her walking and her balance and if I've got any concerns at all that she's not going to be able to carry on on her own then obviously I won't be able to discharge her so I'm just going to see how it goes when I get there a few weeks ago Audrey was unable to walk without someone helping her balance Thanks, and you? <laughs> Don't think you'd be answering the door to me. Goodness no. me. Hey, what you want me up to today, then? Ah, well, come to see how things are. Well, not too bad. I'm going to let you just carry on, if that's all right. All right. On my own steam. Yeah, take it steady. Right. Well done. Getting there? God, oh, dear, full steam ahead today. Brilliant. What I really think is great about community nursing is that you do see patients in their own homes. You see a different person. You see the real person. Look at that. It's amazing. When patients make the progress, and that's what really makes the job worthwhile. What's the verdict? Is that better? God, Good. look yeah. at you. Good Strong job. on your legs as well. 
This Thank is amazing, Audrey, to that. see you walking like this today. To think of how, where you've come, well, come to, to come this point. Hospital. Oh, yeah. Didn't expect to see you doing this. No, no. These small steps are giving her back her independence. I'm delighted to see her walking around um, and the fact that she doesn't have to rely on that wheelchair anymore. It's absolutely brilliant. Because you've done so brilliantly, we can discharge you today. Oh dear, sorry to see you go. We've had, had a We've laugh had good and times, some hard work and some what you call it. We've had we? lots of fun yeah. and laughter. <laughs> it's been brilliant having Karen to help me do all these things and exercises. Because you wouldn't get off out the bed really if you never had somebody there pushing you. Even though this is going to be my last visit with I you, I want you to keep up all this do good all work. What you're me, right? Yeah. I'm sorry right, to have to well, go, but you've done, you and you, you've done yeah. absolutely amazing. Bye-bye yeah. yeah. for Bye. now. When I first met Audrey at home, she was literally confined to the wheelchair, unable to stand, completely dependent on everybody to do everything for her. She has worked so hard to keep going, and for Audrey, I think it just shows such great progress. It's been three months since Audrey's stroke. Yay! After I had my stroke, I thought that was it. But now I'm coming out like I can't used to do with my friend. I feel it's been a long road, but it's been worth it in the end. Looking at pictures of summer sun in January might be forgiven for thinking a new life abroad is the best way to escape the winter gloom. Next in a new series, meet some of the five and a half million Brits overseas who found that life away from home has been nothing but trouble abroad. One day more. Another day in the destiny.